it's time to start a new project and this is it. If you don't recognize this then this should give you a clue and it is indeed a Hazeltine or Hazeltine 2000. So although it looks like a standard dumb terminal or maybe even a, a, a vintage PC this is what's called a smart terminal and we'll come back to the difference and the extra features that this has over a dumb terminal in a future video. This is just an introduction to this uh, particular project and um, the project is to get this working. In fact I have two of these to get working and uh, this is the first of them so straight away you can see it needs a lot of care and attention. I don't know what the internal condition is, I don't know if it's complete um, so I don't know how far we'll be able to get through and uh, whether we can get this working again. Uh, these machines were introduced back around 1970. They were very expensive at the time, equivalent of about £20,000 in today's money. And as I say, it's not just a dumb terminal. If you've seen my repair videos on things like the ADM3, this is similar in some ways to those, but it has uh, some far more advanced features. And uh, we'll go into those, uh, as I say, in a future video. Um, this thing's incredibly heavy, it weighs about 30 kilograms, so about 60-65 uh, pounds. Um, it's made of fairly thick metal and has a, a very big transformer inside. Um, I don't know whether all the electronics is complete or what the state is. So what we'll do now is we will... Um, this keyboard separate by the way, it comes it's completely detachable. So what I'll do now is take this uh, outer cover off, we'll have a look inside and see what we are up against. So with the cover removed you can see already there's quite a lot in here. One thing that's maybe not immediately apparent is we have a similar arrangement here to what we have in the PDP machine we've been looking at which is a uh, wire wrapped backplane. Uh, we've got a video driver card on the, the top, we've got a control panel at the bottom, this is normally uh, housed behind a metal flap fairly well uh, bent up so that will need straightening out but the interesting part of the construction of this is on the side as you can see what we have is a whole row of cards that are inserted into the back plane and each uh, block of electronics in this system is put into its own small card so very nice uh, arrangement makes it quite nice to work on um, in some ways it's nice to work on that is, in other ways it's a bit cumbersome because some of the circuits are split across multiple cards. Uh, but either way it should be quite an interesting machine to work on. This rack can be uh, pivoted out, it's not, it's not supposed to be uh, hinged but the way it's arranged means it's fairly easy to swing this out and uh, it gives you good access to the back plane. OK, so I'll spin this round we'll have a look at the back. So looking at the back you can see there are various connectors and I'll come back to the purpose of these in a future video uh, but it is clear that we're not the first to uh, have looked inside this. We can see there are various screws missing, there are lots of bits and pieces missing, more screws missing, it's a huge transformer which is one of the reasons it's so heavy and uh, power supply. Um, it looks reasonably intact. I can't see anything immediately that appears to be missing. So it's got here model TVH12C, so that's just uh, I believe the monitor model, I don't think that's the terminal model. And um, it's been in reasonable condition, so OK, what I'm going to try and do is swing out the rack and we'll see if we can have a look at the other side of the back plane. So with just a few screws removed we can hopefully swing this entire assembly round so we can see the back of it, which we can. And as you can see we've got quite a complex um, back plane on this. It's um, kind of wire wrapped, it's an odd sort of wire wrap, it's not, they're not standard square pins um, but it is a, a kind of wire wrap system. Um, 
most of these are actually small plugs so you can uh, pull these off and uh, plug them back on so although it's very similar to a wire wrap this used a series of small push-on connectors rather than tightly wrapped pins and um, we've also got uh, more power supply components in here I'll just move the camera so you can see the main transformer a bit more clearly so you see big power transformer in the center there there's bits of uh, dirt well you can't see it. there's a fuse in there which appears to be intact so that's a good sign I'm not sure this is completely intact I think there might be some parts missing um, but I'll spin this round and we'll have a look at the other side of the chassis so more power supply components down here some huge capacitors in there another transformer and uh, one thing I have noticed is there is a connector here that uh, doesn't go to anything so as I said I think there's some parts are missing out of this um, I'll go through and have a good look at this um, off camera but uh, at the moment this is just a quick introduction to see um, in essence what's in here um, again it looks like uh, we're not the first people to have uh, had a look in here a lot of the screws have been taken out they're not all properly refitted the board at the top is just flapping about main selector um, there's just a couple of plug-in cards here and you pull these out and it allows you to select the mains voltage you just take it out turn it around and it allows you to select anything from 115 to 230 volts um, a lot of dust and dirt in here various heat sinks there's a big cooling fan on the back that's supposed to keep everything cool doesn't look too bad the CRT is actually intact it's not broken just has a lot of screen burn so that's what uh, we'll be looking at I don't know how far we'll be able to get through this whether we can get this working uh, whether it's got any memory in it at all this does need memory it's um, because of the features it has it won't function correctly without memory and um, I said the next step is to have a look through see what's here see what's missing and whether uh, we're going to be able to get this working <laughs>